we'll start sir i'll just tell you when to start okay no problem please so you can start now okay yeah thank you okay uh, good afternoon everyone so today i'm uh, taking the second class of this online api api course that is uh, multi scale modeling and uh, simulation of biological system so in the last class we have discussed about the theoretical basis of uh, computer simulation and specifically molecular dynamic simulation so and that is very uh, important to remember all those approximation because when you plan to do a simulation of your system biological system you have to keep in mind the approximation that uh, you are making so last class we mainly went through the theoretical basis how do we represent the uh, macromolecules or the biological system and then uh, i mean uh, what are the uh, equation or what uh, what is the force field i mean that is one of the most important thing of uh, molecular dynamic simulation so today i'm going to uh, show you uh, an example actually then how to set up a molecular dynamic simulation okay so i mean as molecular dynamics is uh, you already know that if you know the position velocity and interaction among atoms the future can be predicted now here is a beautiful demonstration of the application of molecular dynamic simulation so these are all bacterial enzymes what uh, you are seeing in this uh, moving picture and that is a bacterial enzyme so uh, as like human being bacteria also needs energy i mean they need to extract energy from food to survive so what they do they also need to synthesize, synthesize that uh, atp that is the energy currency so in our body in the human body that's uh, we have enzymes actually that transfer electrons from one enzyme to another and that's uh, eventually that's a uh, complex process uh, they uh, produce the atp and in bacteria what they found out that here uh, they found out that this uh, bacterial enzymes mainly uh, there are iron sulfur protein cytochrome uh, c uh, oxidases so what they found out that these bacterial enzymes can form a super complex that positions all these enzymes that you are seeing very close to each other and with the right pose for faster electron transfer and therefore more efficient energy conversion so this thing you see how cleverly they are exploiting the mechanism to produce more energy that is uh, to synthesize the atp now this is a result of uh, this uh, left hand picture i mean the results of molecular dynamic simulation that uh, movie you are seeing the molecular dynamics molecule in motion so you see all this it's a, a collection of enzymes like uh, i mean proteins so uh, so now today we will see actually how do we set up i mean that's very important to understand how do we model these complexes how do we model how do we uh, represent from uh, in reality and then how this uh, uh pictures that is the molecular dynamics are generated going to the next slide i mean there are two complex systems you see that can be simulated by molecular dynamic system so here is the nucleosome particle that is it's uh, you know you can see that the dna is wrapping around uh, some eight uh, proteins histone proteins that's a big molecule i mean uh, macromolecule large biological complex so that can be also present day is actually simulated and it contains around i mean 2 lakh uh, 5000 atoms around 
and on the right hand side also uh, you can see that the membrane protein how can, and molecular dynamics can be carried out this is basically i mean a potassium channel so i mean uh, this protein is embedded in a membrane and then i mean it is simulated containing i think uh, it's a uh, 54000 atoms so this type of complex system and uh, there are many more uh, that can be simulated by md simulations now we will see today how to set up a molecular dynamic simulation so before we go further let's uh, recapitulate again the approximation that we have uh, studied in the last class that is very important because you know i mean you can set up a molecular md simulation but uh, I mean, the result should be meaningful and I mean, it should be reliable that you should, that means that you should follow uh, proper uh, standard protocols that uh, how do you get a reliable simulation data. So macromolecules are described as a collection of balls that meet the partial charges, atomic partial charges connected by springs. So while interacting through non nearest neighbors through charge charge Coulomb interaction and short range repulsion. Now here you see that how this the in molecular dynamics in molecular mechanical force field. So that is molecular mechanics. I mean, so there is the difference between the molecular mechanics and molecular dynamics. So be careful about that. Uh, this is the molecular mechanics which approximate the molecules macromolecules or any molecule that it's a collection of balls they are connected by springs so how do you represent that that modeling part mathematically so we have this force field calculation that will describe the that will describe the interaction among the atoms i mean that is a collection of balls or atoms whatever but they are interacting constantly interacting with each other so one needs to specify the form of this interaction, that, that the mathematical form of interaction, that the physical forces that are acting on one another. I mean, this atom is exerting on this atom or the other atoms actually. So the bonded atoms, the non-bonded atoms, how they are exerting force uh, on each other. So that has to be properly described. So this is the potential function that is called a force field that we have described in the last class that these are the bond angle and angle terms. This is the bond link force potential energy function. This is the ang bond angle potential energy function and this is the dihedral potential function. So these are the equation or mathematical form that describe the bonded atoms. Now we will see in the next uh, slide we have seen that how the non-bonded atoms because you see that uh, there are many many i mean lots of atoms or thousands of atoms in that in a macromolecule so there will be many non-bonded atoms so it's important to i mean capture the real physics i mean the underlying physics among these non-bonded atoms so one interaction that is a short range interaction is uh, described by this expression that's the basically a Leonard Jones potential. So that is called Van der Waals interaction. And then the electrostatic interaction is taken care of by the Coulomb's law. I mean, you all know here the capital D represent, uh, uh, here the capital D represent uh, the effective dielectric uh, of the medium. So now we have seen that how the molecules, I mean, the, the macromolecules are, uh, quite big and they are collection the approximation in molecular mechanics is that they are represented as a collection of balls connected by springs and how they interact uh, among each other that we have also seen that the bonded how the bonded interaction are described how the non-bonded interactions are described so what we have learned so far is that suppose there is a molecule and you, if you can see the slide that it's a collection of you know balls or atoms with uh, partial charges actually on it but you do not see a molecule right here i mean you do not see just uh, these blue balls and uh, these uh, 
one kilovolts is there. So they are just moving. I mean, if you just uh, assume that this uh, arrow represent their uh, extent, the the intensity of their uh, uh, the magnitude of their velocity uh, to be specific. So, but you do not see any molecule. I mean, it's a collection of some atoms, okay, or uh, is there. So, what you have to do or needs to do is the following. You have to build a molecule out of this collection of these uh, atoms like that. So, what you need to do, you need to connect. You need to connect the atoms. I mean, between appropriate atoms by a proper bond and then by proper bond angle where and uh, as well as the other other terms. So here you can see that if you just uh, see clearly that the earlier picture of, uh, you know, uh, the collection of atoms now here means taking the form of a molecule that is, is basically nothing but if you see the phenyl alanine uh, amine acid that is represented in a molecular mechanical terms so that is how the amino acid is represented here uh, in the molecular that is the classical force field uh, picture so you need to build the molecule by defining bond connectivity atom names atom types parameters and so on so this is the thing we are uh, do. Uh, we will see how we can do, how we can define, a, I, how we can give a shape to a particular collection of atoms or like that to form a well-defined molecular residue or groups. Now this is the general strategy strategy of running a molecular dynamic simulation. First, you have to get the input. That is the initial structure. Now you can get the initial structure from PDB source or any other source. I'm coming uh, to more details in that regard. And then you have to perform a energy minimization. After you get the structure, you have to do an energy minimization. Now why? Uh, once you get a structure, suppose if you say from a X-ray crystallography, so in the structure, there will be many uh, unfavorable contacts or there will be classes between groups or I mean, uh, so the energy minimization is there to relieve to relieve all those uh, stress that unfavor unfavorable contacts or I mean, uh, you know, some uh, or unfavorable orientation. So if you energy minimize of the initial structure, that is the structure you are getting from the PDP, then it will be it will lead to a more I mean, Another, it will give you a, a confirmation that will be devoid of this. I mean, to some extent of all this unfavorable contacts, orientation like that. So that's why it is generally recommended that you energy do a energy minimization of the initial input structure. Then what you do, you need to do heating to around the 300 Kelvin. Why is that needed? Because once you get a structure from the PDB, so what happens are there are water molecules also there will be there in the crystal structure. So they need to occupy the proper place. I mean, according to their uh, physical and chemical nature. So this heating gradually will allow, will gradually will relax the structure or it will allow to penetrate uh, the, uh, uh, it will allow the water molecules to penetrate the inside cavity of this big biomolecule and that's how i mean they will occupy you will get a more uh, 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 restructure that will be uh, will have you know favorable uh, orientation favorable occupation of the water molecule inside that so after you do that you run equilibration uh, by equilibration means that you have to make the structure stable so that it does not fluctuate much during the molecular dynamics trajectory. So there is a parameter uh, that I will come in the next slide. How do you uh, determine that kind of a fluctuation? So finally, you run the production uh, in D run that you can uh, utilize for your for the data generation. For you, you can calculate various properties from the data. And, of, and as I have said that you have to 
correspond this production MD run to the experimental observables. So if you remember correctly in the last class, what we have uh, taken a concept that an ensemble concept. So you have to choose a, an appropriate ensemble. Maybe it is a canonical or it's a NPT that is the isothermal isobaric ensemble for your simulation. So under which your uh, system uh, you have uh, studied. So now we will come taking a particular example. So this is the PDB structure of salicylate one to diapsogenase. So that is uh, uh, is an enzyme. So what it does, uh, it takes the oxygen from air and breaks the oxygen in between two oxygen atoms, then incorporate the oxygen atom into it, into the substrate salicylate. So this is a protein or uh, specifically enzyme structure that uh, the PDB ID you see three N J D dot PDB. So we have obtained this uh, PDB structure from this organization that is the RC protein data bank RCSB or the, uh, dot org. So once you download this PDB structure from this website, so you may need to edit it because there will be uh, many issues actually with that PDB structure. So what are the issues? I mean, there will be you have to remove. You may have to remove the glycerol. Uh, sometimes I mean the glycerols are trapped uh, because of uh, I mean uh, for crystallization inside the uh, crystal structure and. Uh, also, sometimes also the inhibitor may be there because for crystallization it may be necessary to uh, to make a complex with the inhibitor. So you have to take care of those issues. And also, I mean, many times the same atom appear in different places. So with the you have to correct actually you have to remove the atoms with the corresponding uh, temperature factor. So all these modification i mean it's not that you get the pdb structure from the website and then di just directly put for md simulation you have to be you have to examine the pdb structure i mean closely so that i mean no problem happens after you run a md simulation now in case the pdb file is not available then you can do for, I mean, search for NMR data for the, I mean, structural data for that protein. If it is available, that is good. But uh, in many cases, it may not be available also. So then you have to, so, uh, here actually it's uh, IGN and not I generate, that is generate. You have to generate the structure using homology model. What I mean is that you have to build up this protein structure, which is not available from the, the PDB or other sources. Uh, based on a known template of, a, of another protein. So that's how you, 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 you get the initial input structure from the uh, from these uh, sources. So once you have got the your structure of the biomolecular structure from the sources, you have to decide on the force field which you want to use. I mean, there are various available uh, commercial or non-commercial molecular dynamics packages, program packages to run molecular dynamic simulation. For example, I mean, I mean, and they uses different parts. I mean, uh, forms of force field. You need a force field to run in this simulation. I'm repeating this word so that I mean, uh, this uh, you, you, you can understand that this very clearly. So there are charm force field. This is quite popular. Amber force field that is also, I mean, people use a lot. And this, then these are Gromas in the available in the Gromax software. So this OPLS that is also a, a very special kind of a, I mean, the force field that uh, used for uh, many uh, complex system. So you have to decide that uh, which force field you are to use. That is because this force field varies though the general form as i have already shown you that the force field equation that mathematical form contains uh, bond angle parts uh, bond parts angle part dihedral part as well as the non bonded part that includes the van der waals and the electrostatic interaction but in this force field the charm amber opls bromos actually they will vary in their 
formulation because some force field may include an additional term as well to accurately capture the underlying physical interaction among the atom. So you have to judiciously decide which force field will be best for your system. Now download the corresponding topology and parameter files from the website. First you choose the force field. I mean, then from the force field website, uh, you, you download the corresponding topology and parameter file. Now, again, another issue is that if the residues were not recognized, suppose you have a substrate or non-natural residues or a ligand, I mean, uh, that is not recognized. So you have to search in the, then the literature that whether they are already parameterized or not. So they have to be created in the topology file. If you don't have, I mean, uh, you, you will come across a, a small ligand or small molecule like uh, it, it is not there. And then you have to do add uh, hydrogen addition to the protein structure because in the extra structure that is not there. So these are the initial steps that you should uh, consider before going further that uh, the force field decision then you have to download all these uh, files and then you have to create if the ligands uh, are not available, then you add the hydrogens to the protein structure. Now what we will do, we will see examine the file format of this uh, following uh, files. One is the PDV file. How does it look like? Uh, I'm not, uh, I will not definitely go into a detailed picture because that is not permissible in this short time. Then the topology file, but the basic features uh, of these files actually, so that uh, if you are interested or if you want to learn more, you can go through the tutorial or the documentation that go, which are easily available on the website. You can understand more and the parameter file and the relating. Uh, and relating then finally to the potential energy terms. Box is the PDV file format. How does it look like? I must tell you that this is a part of the PDV file. I mean, PDV file are is a it's a big file. I mean, it's a, they are they they contain so many uh, lines actually uh, written like that uh, uh, that way. So uh, you see, this is again, I have downloaded the PDV file of uh, salicylate one uh, diopsidinase that have a, a PDV code, this one. So only a part is given. Now, what I want to show you is here that what various entries in this file refers to. Now, here is the uh, atom thing here left side. So it is the index one, two, three, and then the name of the uh, uh, this uh, atom you see that ni uh, nitrogen, uh, carbon, and uh, carbon, oxygen, and these are the race name GLU. So, uh, that is the residue name, and this is the chain corresponding. Sometimes there may be more than one chain, A, B, C, like that. So, you have to consider different chains very carefully. And this is the residue ID, yeah. And these are the X, Y, Z coordinate. That is the Cartesian coordinate of those uh, of the atoms of that uh, residue. And this is the occupancy. This is the temperature factor. Finally, I mean, in the this column, it is, it is the element name. So this is the portion of the PDB file is shown here. And uh, I have uh, just explained the meanings of various uh, data. So if you are interested, you can just go through in detail actually what are uh, by downloading a PDB file from the website and then uh, try to understand actually what are the uh, details that is there inside. Now, the important thing uh, to understand from the here is that there is no connectivity information in the PDB file. If you see that picture, you see here that salicylate dioxygenase, it's a collection of balls, I mean, like atoms, so no connect I mean, you do not see any molecule as I have already explained that, you know, you have to supply sufficient data or sufficient uh, all these parameters or those things to make a shape of the uh, molecule. I mean, it's a meaningful uh, structure. 
So once you get the PDB file, but there is uh, no connectivity information in the PDB file. So how do we then uh, supply this uh, connectivity information to make a, I mean, well, well documented or I mean, uh, a meaningful molecule. So next, what you need after uh, you are done with the PDB file, you need a topology file. Now here I am specifically discussing the charm topology file. Obviously there will be the amber topology file, the Gromos topology file. So the basic features of all these topology file will be same as I am uh, telling you. A charm post field topology file contains all the information needed to convert a list of residue names into a complete PSF structure file. PSF means post protein structure file. So, and it also contains internal co coordinates that allow the automatic assignment of coordinate to hydrogens and other atoms missing from a crystal PDB file. And the current version of the charm force field are charm 22 for proteins and charm 27 for lipids and nucleic acids. So similarly, there will be topology file for amber force field, for bromos force field, for OPLS force field and for other as well. But uh, what is the basic feature of this topology file is that they contains the information. I mean, uh, a, suppose we have already seen that uh, what is there in the PDB file. I mean, you know the Cartesian coordinates are there, but those are not connected. I mean, there is no bond connectivity connectivity information in the PDB file. So you have to form, you have to give save to this PDB file. And that's what topology file uh, comes into picture. Now, here I'm just specifically discussing the charm force field uh, topology file. So we will see a specific uh, charm force field file. So how does it look like? Here is the thing. Again, I'm telling that it's a, only a part is given below charm topology file. I mean, appears. Uh, you know, it's a big file. I mean, if you see that so many information, so many lines are there. Now, what does this mean actually? When you uh, download a charm topology file, how does it uh, look like and what this, uh, 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 this uh, term suggests? Now, this is again the ID and this is the atom type. And so this is the molar mass of that uh, atom. And here are the atom names actually. These are hydrogen, and lastly, there will be comment section. Now, why it is important? The comment section add actually uh, that uh, to explain what kind of atom is that. You see that all are hydrogen. Yeah, all are hydrogen, but they are of different type, and that is decided by this atom type. I mean, you you cannot just. Uh, 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 take a, I mean, every atom you can, you cannot treat every atom individually because it will be a huge uh, task actually then to solve the Newton's equation of motion. So similar type of atom, similar type of atom means which atom have a similar kind of physical and chemical environment. So they are grouped together in a particular atom type. So that's uh, the significance of atom type. Now, here the mass keyword implies that an atom definition star. So what it does, it, it, it is defining a certain kind of atom, that is the atom type, by uh, providing mass and then uh, the element name. And the element name will be same because it's the hydrogen. But you know, so all hydrogens are not uh, same. I mean, it depends on the, definitely on the environment, actually the chemical and physical environment it is in. And then this exclamation mark, this exclamation mark refers to the comment section explaining the different types of the same atom. So which type of atom is there? So I suggest that when you go through a charm topology file, you uh, try to read all this comment section so that it will be clear to you that what atom, uh, what type of atoms are there. Now mass entries are needed in both the topology and parameter file, and these details are needed to construct a, again a protein structure file. 
which will be helpful to form the to give a shape to the molecule. So coming to the some another part of the topology file. So earlier we have seen that how an atom is uh, uh, definition uh, starts. Now we will see how at residue you have to define all those things and no one is going to define all those things actually. So the topology file, uh, I mean, do that job. So this is uh, defining the alanine residue. You see that uh, that starts with this uh, RSC, R E S I E word, and this is the alanine abbreviated name. And so what are these? These are the atom name. And these are the atom type. So the atom type will be in many cases in many residue will be a similar same name appear same type of atom may appear in uh, different kinds of residue you, you have to understand that point and then that uh, uh, these are the charges uh, of the thing so uh, how do we get all these things this is generally obtained by from uh, you know from some experimental data either from spectroscopy or from high level quantum mechanical calculation so once you are done i mean this is the part of the topology file that i'm trying to explain so what are there now coming to the once you uh, get try to understand actually if you read the uh, topology file more you will uh, know more now here is the charm parameter file again i mean uh, a part i will be explaining a part of the whole file so a charm four spin parameter file contains all the numerical constant now here comes the quantity i mean the value needed to evaluate forces and energies given a 40 psf structure file and atomic coordinates the parameter file is closely tied to the topology file that was used to generate the protein PSF file and then the two are typically distributed together and giving matching names. Otherwise, you see what the problem will be if there are different uh, difference in these two files parameter and topology. So they cannot interact with each other. They cannot, I mean, just uh, take the values based on the topology of, of an atom or of an residue from the parameter file, there will be confusion arises and the simulation will, uh, will fail. The current version of the charm force field are charm 22 for proteins, similar like, as uh, like the topology file. So if you see a parameter file, charm parameter file, uh, it looks like, uh, I mean, a part of uh, it looks like that. You see that the bonds definition Similarly, there will be angle definition, uh, diagonal angle definition. Here, already I have uh, told you that uh, you know this is the bonds. This is the bond length r, and this is the angle theta. You know, and then uh, this is the diagonal pi, and this is the improper uh, angle. So all these values you have to specify in the parameter file for MD simulation. So here are the values you see the bond equal to, you know, uh, KB, uh, the force constant equal to, uh, uh, this equation you are already have seen. I have just uh, uh, shown you uh, at the start of this presentation. And then uh, uh, these are the atoms, that is the iron atom. And then the bonds are defined the carbon carbon bond with the force constant and as well as with the bond length so these are all given so now this is how a bond information is provided is given in the parameter file which will be uh, tallied with the topology file and then a i mean when a psf file there that is the protein structure file so it will read from these two file and then the molecule that the biomolecule will be will get a shape actually from pd file i have already explained that what you get and then subsequently you need all these files the topology file and the par parameter file then the calculation i mean will 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 go forward once these are ready uh, this will be i mean uh, uh, you you are ready for the simulation so now you have to be very careful. I mean, this is a huge system containing so many atoms. I mean, thousands of thousands of atoms, uh, sometimes even uh, 
to the extent of lux of atoms. So if the residue, any residue were not recognized in the topology file, they have to be created in the topology file. Otherwise, you cannot proceed with the calculation. And you have to make sure also that hydrogen should have been added to waters. And if it has not done things properly, either you have to choose a different terminus or create one by yourself. So you have to be very careful in, in preparing the structure for MD simulation. And so there are the following steps. You have to add water and ions to this uh, structure. I mean, if you are using there are visualization software like VMD, Chimera, so you can import the PDB structure there and do all these steps. I mean, this is uh, not that difficult. So, but the steps uh, you have to understand very clearly. So you have to add water because you know these biological molecules uh, doesn't uh, exist in vacuum, but they exist. Their environment is mostly aqueous, and ions are needed sometimes to. Uh, just it can just neutralize the cell or uh, I mean uh, if, if there are any uh, charges there so it will be helpful to uh, in that purpose. So next you have to get the size of the protein and solvent once you add water salt and you have to guess there are uh, ways actually in the visualizing software that is BMD or say you can get the size of the protein plus solvent so then you give uh, 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 is like uh, 0.5 angstrom extra and uh, if required you have to edit the box size also i mean uh, you will get experience with that once you uh, try uh, uh, your hand in this all these uh, 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 files and then you have to tell nmd now again there are various md simulation packages so here i'm particularly discussing about this nmd there are amber also program packages there are boomax there are you know from uh, uh, showing that there are dl poly many are there but i'm uh, just uh, giving you one example and the basic feature will be similar i mean with the finer details may vary but these are the steps you have one needs to do to run a molecular dynamic simulation so then you have to tell the NMD which atoms should be frozen, then test if the NMD runs. So after going to a cluster, you run the equilibration. In the first step, what happens? You I mean it's important to understand that I mean suddenly you relax the whole protein molecule because you know then there might be clashes and uh, it can collapse. The MD simulation can fail. So what you have to do? You have to uh, do it gradually. The first, the water moves freely, and then the protein is frozen. Little by little, the protein the strains are loosened. So then we want a free MD without restraint. So if, if everything goes well, you just run the production MD and take some snapshot. Obviously, now you have to decide the appropriate uh, ensemble. That is whether it is a canonical ensemble or whether it is a NPT ensemble, because that's what we measure generally. The experimental properties are measured. Uh, uh, the, the ensemble averages. Okay, so after you do everything, the system will look like that. You see that your PDB green protein is there. That is a kinase. I have already shown this picture in the last class, but again, I'm showing because now you are you have set up the uh, the MD simulation, all the follows, all the protocols. So this is the green protein that is uh, you know immersed in a solvent water solvent these small small you know red white things are the h2o that is water solvent and this uh, purple is the potassium and uh, these are the orange things so this will uh, look like that one after you follow all the steps now there are some practical aspect i have already told you that in the biological system they are they have many degrees of freedom so we expect to find a very large number of local minima and it is not clear in an efficient way to find the lowest minima. So what is the suggestion is that you have to use more computer time and different types of search procedure, generating different configuration and minimizing at different regions of conformation space of the given molecule. So now we are coming to the application part. Once you run some MD, so we will now see actually what we can do. So we can calculate the root mean square deviation uh, from the MD simulation data. That is, uh, it is defined as the spatial difference between two static structure and the formula is uh, 
given here that is uh, ri is the uh, uh, x is the target structure R, uh, ri this would be ri y should be the reference structure and then i is the current atom actually so you take this average and you will get the root mean square deviation so here is a uh, example of the lysozyme rmsd of the lysozyme backbone atoms during production md simulation following least square fitting to the indicated reference structure you see this red red curve here uh, is the crystal structure and this black one is the equilibrium equilibrium structure obtained from the md simulation so you see they are uh, quietly quite uh, closely fitting so uh, rmsd is an important proper i mean uh, property that in can calculate from the MD simulation data because it, it it can help you to understand that what part of your biomolecules is fluctuating or uh, more compared to the other parts or compared to your you know other reference uh, state so it can give you the dynamic view actually it can uh, have some assumption actually that okay how your uh, simulated structure differs from the experimental structure now another application of the biological system that is quite quite obvious from uh, for md simulation is that uh, that you can get the dynamics of biological system you know that is the i think uh, one of the important part of molecular dynamic simulation in uh, with other experimental methods actually it's very hard to get these atomistic details but computer simulation and uh, in other words molecular dynamic simulation give you the atomic motions the atoms are in motion always so you it can it can act as a computational microscope to uh, to give you to see to see the dynamics of the biological system in motion here you see this is a lactate dehydrogenase this is an enzyme which transfer hybrid ion to from one molecule to another and this is a very important enzyme in our uh, i mean uh, it exists in various forms so what we have got from MD simulation of 15 nanosecond simulation, there is a conformational transition. You see, this conformational transition is indicated by this RT shift, and that is shown in the inshade. This arginine 169, uh, that is the acid site substrate binding uh, arginine. This this is undergoing a conformational transition after this 15 nanosecond simulation. So you can get, I mean, uh, you have to detect in your uh, many, I mean, uh, studies, your studies of biological system that whether they are undergoing any significant conformational transitions or not. And um, if it is undergoing, then you can get an atomistic view. It can get a very microscopy view of the uh, uh, conformational transition from MD simulation. That is quite helpful in explaining uh, many experimental results as well as uh, I mean if you want to design an inhibitor or drug that information will be helpful in that respect also. So there is another system that is the ATP synthase that's a huge uh, you know uh, bio biological complex. So what does it do? This is called the motor of life because it synthesizes the ATP adenosine uh, triphosphate so and atp is the energy currency of our uh, or energy currency in the cell because it uh, it, it helps to uh, the cell to carry out their uh, i mean carry out their essential function so this is the molecular dynamics uh, picture that is uh, obtained uh, for this atp synthesis you see that all this uh, swiveling motion of the proteins i mean they are undergoing so uh, nicely uh, to generate the atp uh, atp but uh, to get uh, this kind of structure these are uh, advanced simulation technique but the basic principle uh, is same uh, which i have already told you in the beginning now I'm going to advanced simulation technique. Why we have to go that 
we need to calculate this is another important factor of uh, in the calculation that you many a times you need to do a free energy calculation but that is how you can explain certain experimental result now we need special method to do free energy calculation why we will see now the calculation of free energy differences is a central task in uh, multi scale simulation now in this uh, uh, curve actually if you see that this is an energy landscape very simplified the configuration the trajectory is well uh, traveled means uh, the configuration space is well sampled from this side to that side but here where there is a certain kind of a barrier like a mountain you see that the trajectory uh, roams here only i mean travels it's a local travel so it, it is unable to sample the system over a sufficient range of configuration to accurately calculate thermodynamic data. This is the energy landscape I have already shown you that what basically molecules do, they move over an energy surface. This is a potential energy surface and it's a very simplified energy landscape. This molecule uh, is moving from uh, their and then it is overcoming this barrier here then it is coming here now this is a very simplified picture of uh, energy landscape i will show you in the next slide how an energy uh, landscape looks like now what are these things suppose you are performing molecular dynamics uh, for this uh, system or molecule so you will get all this uh, conformation so in this region one two three four five like so many actually also here also you will get many confirmation so in md simulation what it does it travels it explores different regions of confirmation and thereby i mean it builds a library of uh, confirmation that uh, may be accessible to that uh, particular uh, biological system now lastly i have put a biology uh, question mark here why is that See, it can sample or it can visit these places uh, by molecular dynamics uh, simulation. But the question is that whether it will be able to overcome this barrier to go this side. And that is a, one of the limitations, I mean, uh, of MD simulation is that the high energy barriers are not visited that well. So that's why the question mark is, uh, uh, is there. So how do you overcome that? We will come in the next slide. Now here is a free energy land, landscape. I mean, free energy surface that is uh, in essence, reality is a, actuality is a hyper surface. You see the complexity. Now this is a free energy landscape of the this, uh, this peptide. I mean, this is a uh, important peptide associated with it, Alzheimer's disease. It is an intrinsically disordered uh, peptide. So I mean, what I have shown you here is the uh, the free energy surface of this uh, peptide to understand because free energy landscape of a protein helps to rationalize important aspects of its uh, behavior like its uh, stability, mechanisms of folding and the molecular recognition. I mean, and uh, the possibility of misfolding and aggregation. Now, here are the various conformation. So this is the this axis is the beta seed content plotted against the beta seed content this axis is plotted against the alpha helical con uh, content and this is the compactness uh, in the z axis and you see that the various snapshots are given below so the these regions are the low blue region is the low region uh, low energy region this red is the lowest in that term and this is the yellowish and this is the cyan so the conformation generally doesn't visit these white regions because these are high energy so you, you, you see that various conformation, this uh, uh, disordered peptide is visiting. So once you know this information, this will be very helpful. I mean, suppose if you, because uh, this is associated with Alzheimer's disease, and if you want to block this, uh, its function, then you, you can plan for a certain innovator design. So once you know that what are the conformation it exists, I mean, it will be convenient to design uh, a particular, I mean, an, an appropriate uh, inhibitor for this uh, polypeptide. Now, coming to the free energy calculation. So, this is the equation we get from 
statistical thermodynamics. That is the F equal to minus KB T ln Q. Now, F is the Helmholtz free energy and KB is the Boltzmann constant, T is absolute temperature. Q is the partition function. Uh, here it is the expression also is given. Uh, it is the summation uh, of uh, exponential minus uh, epsilon i by kbt. So this is we. I mean, you can easily get the details of this uh, free energy equation from any standard uh, statistical mechanics or statistical thermodynamic book. Uh, as I have told you in the earlier in the last classes that the ensemble is required because you have to collect your microscopic entities or properties to the macroscopic observable macroscopic observable means which are which you are getting from experimental results and that is measured over a an average of a huge number of system right so that's how the ensemble concept came and i, I have already told you that you have to choose a and particular type a ensemble based on your requirement or based on your uh, condition experimental condition to perform a in the simulation so how do we do a free energy calculation? As I have already shown you, uh, that uh, normal molecular dynamic simulation uh, has a uh, limitation of visiting uh, certain uh, region of the conformational energy landscape because these are uh, separated by high energy barrier. So there are specialized techniques like umbrella sampling, free energy perturbation, thermodynamic integration all these are there to give you more sampling that means uh, it will visit the conformational place i mean most regions of the conformational space to give you a, a, a more realistic thermodynamic data now coming to each of the technique that is first i will come to the umbrella sampling so what is that? So uh, simulations or MD simulation are only run for finite time. I mean, you will find in practice when you try to uh, set up, I mean, run an MD simulation. So the problem is that regions of higher energy are sampled rarely. As I have shown you in the last this slide, actually, if you see that uh, the this region, this region is not that. Uh, you know, this is a this is a, a high barrier. There is a high barrier of our so to, so these molecules have to overcome this barrier, and it needs sufficient energy. It needs high energy to overcome this barrier. So in normal MD simulation, they may not be visited. So what you have to do is the following thing: you have to divide the reaction coordinate. That is, suppose there is a state of your conformation of your molecule that is called a and then that is another state is that that is b so you need to uh, transform from a to b so what you do you select a reaction coordinate it may be any geometric parameters or maybe uh, any other factor so you have to separate of the uh, separate the reaction coordinate that is the dash line between two states into distinct windows. You have to divide this connected line by uh, uh, I mean into two states and also into distinct windows. And then what you have to do the system is mainly sampled perpendicular to the reaction coordinate in each window. So what happens actually, this is going from A to B. Now you separate in into many windows and then you just perform the sampling perpendicular to that uh, reaction coordinate so that you know, those regions which are not uh, normally visited in your uh, normal in the simulation, those regions also are sampled. Those conformations are also taken into consideration. So next coming to the another technique that is called uh, free energy perturbation. In free energy perturbation, what we do is the basically following. The instantaneous change from one state to another is sampled over a canonical ensemble. See that uh, and in the, okay, uh, 
in the umbrella sampling thing, uh, we have to do an, uh, another thing. Since these are separated into different windows, we have to accumulate the results. Now, how do we accumulate it? The results of the different windows are combined to result in a global free energy profile. And uh, one of the suggestion is that you the windows so should overlap with each other so that uh, when you uh, post processing uh, like uh, using WAM WHAM or uh, the, that's a histogram method or any other uh, method, the results of the different windows are combined. I mean to give you a global free energy profile. So that is uh, the umbrella sampling. So coming to the free energy perturbation. Uh, there is that thing that uh, it uh, it is sampled over a canonical ensemble and what are these uh, terms uh, imply this uh, daily is the difference in free energy that we are interested in and daily is the difference of the initial and final state and the ensemble overage average over the initial state a so this is free energy perturbation thing so we are now undergoing trying to understand different techniques of free energy calculation first we try to try to understand the umbrella sampling then the free energy perturbation and then there is another technique called thermodynamic integration in thermodynamic integration the transition over a barrier is simulated by fitting the reaction coordinate at different values in a number of windows and sampling the system perpendicular to uh, that reaction coordinate so this is quite i mean if you remember the umbrella sampling thing we are doing a that is a similar kind of thing that the reaction coordinate is uh, 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 is uh, is divided into separate uh, in many windows and then that is uh, sampled perpendicular to the windows so in umbrella sampling the reaction coordinate is not constrained but only restrained and pulled to a target value by a bias potential and that is uh, the thermodynamic integration of having uh, understood this all three techniques i mean though it is not an exist exhaustive details but uh, giving you the basic flavor of each technique coming to an application of uh, PEP means that pre energy perturbation see many a times you need to calculate the protein ligand binding free energy absolute binding free energy relative binding free energy because that is you know why it is important because a drug i mean if you try to design a drug that should bind to its target whatever may be the target quite efficient so you need to calculate binding free energies and that is uh, you know accurately calculating binding free energies of protein ligand complexes is a challenging problem in biomolecular simulation uh, so we have uh, taken a particular example here to understand actually how they are uh, how free energy perturbation can be applied to calculate such uh, binding free energies so thrombin is a well known drug target for many cardiovascular diseases so there what they have done the authors have taken this uh, a thrombin inhibitors that is the uh, phenylalanine proline based inhibitor the structure is given here if you see that this is the phenylalanine part this is the proline part and this is the binding pocket part that will bind here is that the binding pocket of thrombin where the ligand in represent this is a ligand stick representation is the ligand and the protein is as a blue ribbon so you see that in the binding pocket uh, how that is uh, uh, that is the uh, this uh, uh, group is uh, finding its uh, location so i mean uh, this is the various parts of that thrombin inhibitor so now we will apply this free energy perturbation technique to calculate the binding free energy and then try to compare with the experimental values how these are coming so here and before we go further here is the thermodynamic sample uh, cycle for relative binding free energy calculation use the, using the alchemical free energy perturbation method you have to design a the proper thermodynamics uh, cycle actually to get get the free, free binding free energy of your 
interested, I mean, of your uh, protein ligand complex, which are you are uh, interested in. So after the calculation, here are the binding relative uh, binding free energies are that this is the calculated value that is obtained from the free energy calculation utilizing this FAPE method, free energy perturbation method. And then we have this uh, experimental value. This is the experimental value. So you see, and this is that uh, the group, that the, the group is this one. This R is part of from methyl to this group to chloride uh, or bromide uh, uh, hydrogen like that. So when you this uh, perturbation happens, you see that the values are uh, in many cases they are uh, uh, resemble the experimental uh, values quite uh, good. So as I have said that this is a challenging task to accurately calculate the binding free energy of the protein ligand complex. But you know, as you apply more uh, uh, that enhanced free energy technique like this uh, free energy perturbation. In fact, this is one of the uh, uh, base technique to calculate uh, protein ligand binding free energies. And also, I mean, uh, there are many other uh, newer methods also uh, that can be applied in conjunction with this FAP. So, so far we have studied the classical mechanical picture of the biomolecules. That is, the classical picture says that the macromolecules are described as a collection of balls connected by strings while interacting through non nearest neighbor through charge charge Coulomb interaction and short range repulsion. That is the uh, Van der Waals interaction. Now the question is that what do you, what is the true representative of, of these atoms? I mean, they are quantum mechanical particles like electrons, protons, atom. So they are, in reality, they are quantum mechanical in nature. So this is what we did in the MD simulation. We have assumed a classical picture of all these particles, all these atoms, and that will that is forming the biological system. And because it's easier to solve the Newton's equation in, of motion if you assume this kind of a uh, simplified picture now since biological system contains you know thousands of atoms you know uh, very large number so in classical picture our assumption provide a very nice result which matches uh, uh, with the experimental values but in reality these atoms are quantum mechanical objects so in a biological system where you have to simulate a chemistry, if you see that when in classical MD simulation, you cannot, there is no bond concept. I mean, these are connected, these two atoms are connected by springs. So they will vibrate at the maxima. So they cannot break because the force field will restrict that. And th those are where our approximation in the classical MD picture that this, these are these uh, atoms or balls are connected by springs and they will be governed by this uh, that force field equation. If you remember that uh, that KB uh, into B by B minus B zero whole square. So it cannot break. Now there are many biological system where the chemical reaction is happening. That means breaking and making of chemical bonds is happening with electron reorganization. Now, there is no concept of electron in classical and dissimulation. So, I mean, this is very important point that there is no electron concept in classical and dissimulation. Those are uh, assumed as a classical particle. Those, I mean, in dissimulation apply a molecular mechanical force field where the assumptions are at a, uh, the assumptions are different. Electron is a quantum mechanical particle. This is a you know subatomic particle. So where the chemistry is happening, you cannot apply in this simulation. 
Now, since the electrons are quantum mechanical objects, they will exert quantum mechanical effects like tunneling. I mean, if you have heard about this term, this is, uh, I mean, we do not have that much opportunity to explain to you what this tunneling means, but it is uh, in very simplified language. It is uh, one phenomena that can overcome a barrier without going over the barrier. So that is called tunneling and that is a quantum mechanical phenomena. So there are various electron structure methods available, semi empirical affinity or density functional theory. We'll study all this, I mean, the basics of this method in the next class. Now we have uh, already seen this. So how do we solve this one? Classical ND simulation are not sufficient to describe the chemical part, the chemistry, that is the bond breaking, bond making part in uh, biomolecules and in fact if you see the uh, photo photosystem to or respiratory complexes see that there are many protons and electrons that travel from one location to another and those uh, distances are not short so if you want to get a realistic picture of this uh, complex those are very complex biological systems like respiratory complexes uh, uh, one or uh, uh, photosystem 2, which is utilized in the photosynthesis. So, if you want to truly correctly represent those quantum mechanical objects in this simulation, you have to treat them quantum mechanically because electronic quantum effects are needed for bond breaking and forming processes. And moreover, nuclear quantum effects may be important, especially for lighter uh, atom like hydrogen transfer. There are many uh, enzymes or protein uh, enzymes that uh, we uh, already uh, have seen. One uh, example, lactate dehydrogen, that uh, uh, that is a, I mean, that transfer hydride from one molecule to another. So you need to consider this nuclear quantum effect. And the other thing, as we shall see uh, in the next class, that quantum mechanical simulation is restricted to a very small number of atoms. I mean, biological systems are huge. I mean, containing thousands of uh, atoms. I mean, lots of atoms. So the quantum mechanical simulation of large systems are not practical. And so we have this hybrid method. That is, we take the base quantum mechanics and the molecular mechanics method that includes the electronic quantum mechanical effect in simulation of large system. The large system where the electronic effect are important or the charge transfer, you know, the charge is transferred from one place to another. So those systems cannot be tackled by classical MD simulation. Here you have to treat those uh, atomic particles, subatomic particles like electrons or uh, like hydrogen or all those things quantum mechanically. And so what we are doing in this hybrid method, this QMM method. We are taking the best of both the world from the classical world. So far, we are studying the classical in the simulation, the classical picture, and now we are entering into the quantum world. So we are taking the best of both the world to uh, understand this uh, uh, complex biological system where this uh, bond breaking and uh, bond making that is uh, chemistry is uh, happening. Now, these are the references. Uh, you can go through these uh, books and uh, also the uh, literature. Uh, there are uh, some uh, nice reviews which are, you can, I think, you can follow. These are written in uh, relatively simpler languages. So, in the next class, you will uh, study the multi scale method as I have introduced today that. So far in the last class and today's class, we have seen the classical MD simulation. Uh, you should be careful about that. We are already studying classical molecular dynamic simulation. So there is, let me tell you, there is another kind of a simulation, molecular dynamic simulation that is called ab initio molecular dynamic simulation. That in that case, there is no approximation of that uh, macromolecules as a collection of balls connected by spring. Those were handled quite uh, uh, using some ab initio approaches and that is called ab initio molecular dynamic simulation. So, but uh, I'm not going to uh, teach you that uh, 
kind of uh, molecular dynamic simulation and that is computationally uh, quite expensive and also cannot treat very large system. So in that in treating large system, this hybrid method that is I call quantum mechanics, molecular mechanics method uh, is very important as well as there will be another method that we will discuss uh, in the next class that is the coarse grain method to treat very large system. So today I'll stop here. Thank you for your attention. So I'll be happy to answer your question. Any questions that? Uh, so no questions. No questions. So let me just uh, discuss uh, maybe about a, a two or three things. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Yes. So um, I hope. I mean, uh, I mean, if you if you study the documentation of the uh, specific MD program packages, uh, you will understand it. Uh, more actually that uh, how do you set up a in this simulation in many times actually what you have to do uh, if you are doing an experimental study of a biological system so since the microscopic details uh, that means the atomistic details are not available from many times uh, from the experimental results you have to perform this molecular dynamic simulation i mean if you if you are uh, obviously, that depends on the system and the question you are interested in. So then uh, you have to perform the setup, the molecular dynamic simulation following the guidelines uh, that I have uh, told you today. That uh, first thing is that you have to get a structure because that's how a simulation started. You, you, you cannot start uh, uh, from, uh, from a from no structure, you, you you have to have your something input from uh, from whatever you 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 can uh, generate uh, like a protein. I mean your desired system by homology modeling that I have already told you. And then you have to be careful about the system so that I mean if you run molecular dynamic simulation of uh, of a PDB, I mean sometimes you will see that I mean that the MD simulation is running. But that doesn't mean that you are going the correct way. So the protocol, the parameters, the topology, everything has to be uh, in proper. Everything has to be taken care properly, so that then you will get a reliable result. Actually, that you can uh, compare with the experimental value. Otherwise, I mean, if you see something uh, conformational transitions happening, or you know. I mean, there are some uh, really dynamic nature to a particular portion. Okay, there is a question. I kindly suggest method uh, which force will approach for influence of surrounding environment to protein such as solvent uh, solvent pH to protein. Okay, so to answer your question, I mean you have to really consider the particular nature of your protein now the force field which we have discussed so far is a classical force field means that they have a fixed atomic charges now in reality what we what is happening as the trajectory molecular dynamics trajectory is moving you know the charges also on each atom should change but that is we are not taking care about so that is taken care by an, an, an advanced uh, force field that is called polarizable force field but the problem with using the force field is that that is computationally more demanding so to answer your question that uh, kindly suggest method or which force field is appropriate for influence of surrounding environment to protein 
generally this charm force field amber force field and the opls for to these are i mean you can uh, for your protein you have to search the literature that is there any study which which has done any kind of a computer simulation or molecular simulation for that biological system or not because if i say that charm force field is correct to your protein that may not be appropriate because you have to understand your system properly and then based on your requirement i mean if it is a it, it asks for a special kind of a force field like i'm saying that a polarizable force field or a force field where the atomic charges the point charges are varying with the trajectory are varying with the uh, evolution of the atomic coordinates then you have to resort to some uh, other specialized force field otherwise in general actually if it is your if it is the your i mean any globular protein or uh, uh, like that kind of a system you can uh, use this uh, charm force force field or uh, uh, amber force field or in certain cases uh, this uh, opls force yes so that is the uh, answer uh, that is the answer to your question Yeah, so there is another uh, question, I guess. Uh, can you suggest proper force field used to study nucleic acid and uh, protein interaction? It's in PD, it's crystal structure. Okay, good question. So again, that uh, force field uh, is coming into picture. Now, uh, so what you have to do again uh, in this case also, once you get the PDB crystal structure of this uh, uh, nucleic acid and protein, you have to see that i mean what kind of protein it is as i have said that the force field we have described so far are having a point charges that is their their charges are fixed their charges uh, uh, doesn't uh, change with uh, you know evolution of the uh, classical md simulation in reality it should be in principle it should change actually it should be varied according to the interaction it's having during the trajectory but it doesn't happen so so we have this all classical force field that is charm force field, amber force field, and this OPLS force field. Uh, so what you can do is that, I mean, for your system, nucleic acid and protein interaction, you have to search literature. And then if you get any literature that, okay, charm force field is applied to that kind of a, a protein and nucleic acid, then you can uh, go for that. Otherwise, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I cannot tell you, I mean, there is no clear answer to which force field you can use. These are the very well studied and well documented force field for studying protein and uh, protein uh, individually, as well as uh, interaction of the protein with other proteins, nucleic acids, small ligands are like that. So based on the system and the question that uh, that is your interest, you have to choose uh, one of the force field as i have said that there is a polarizable force field but that is computationally demanding and in many cases if the systems are huge like it's a protein and nucleic acid complex or something that it might be computationally very demanding that means it, it will it will demand more computational resources so you have to generally is based that if you can resort if, if you can apply the charm ambar opls or that kind of a force field that those were very well studied for this kind of a system. Okay, so yeah, that is the answer to your question. You have to really judge the system and then based on that, you have to take the decision. Any other question? Uh, like force field related thing? Because uh, once you get a PDB structure, so the first thing is that uh, uh, you have to you have to decide on the force field, right? Then you can uh, download, as I have already explained to you, the topology and parameter five. But 
fasting, you have to decide on the force field. So in many cases, uh, uh, you, you can use those charm amber force field because those are well documented, which means that if there are some problems or limitation with this force field that is already there in the literature. So you already know, okay, this force field cannot uh, explain or cannot describe this kind of interaction properly. And uh, based on that, you can uh, you can uh, you can decide actually that whether uh, that force field is uh, uh, appropriate to use or not. Any other questions? I mean, uh, also let me tell you that there are various uh, this uh, MD uh, simulation packages are there. Uh, in this presentation, I have only discussed about any MD, but there are like uh, AMBAR. I mean, AMBAR force field is there as well as AMBAR program packages are there also. And also there are uh, Gromax, uh, that is another MD simulation uh, package. So you can, uh, which you are comfortable with, you can use any of the packages for your system. And obviously, your system uh, should be uh, should be uh, addressable by that uh, simulation packages. So this AMBAR, NMD, and uh, uh, like OPLS, you can uh, find actually from the I think uh, Schrodinger uh, showed that is a commercial package. And as well as another important thing will be the visualizing software, because these are uh, big molecules. You know, you need to visualize uh, properly. You have to represent various portion of the biomolecule via various representation. You can you can uh, make that actually. Those are uh, can uh, play with all these things. I, I have uh, shown the picture somewhere from uh, BMD. Uh, that is available from this uh, TC, that is uh, the uh, University of Illinois Urbana Sampen uh, website. So, VMD, another is there from, uh, I think, visualizing software that is Chimera, uh, that is available from the San Francisco, San, Frisco, San, yeah, San Francisco book. Okay, Hirojit is requesting to uh, for a practical demo in next class, if possible. <laughs> okay, in next class, uh, what I have to cover actually is the, the advanced multi-scale methods for simulation. And uh, the thing is that I have to finish uh, within this time frame. I have uh, got, I mean, these three classes are given to me, and you see that uh, you know each of the technique like classical md simulation or the quantum mechanical methods or the free energy calculation or next class uh, i will uh, come to another uh, advanced methodology that is the high beam qmm and post gain method so each of this method will uh, it, it it requires a uh, several classes actually for you to understand uh, the concept what I'm trying in this class is to basically give you the basic feature, very basic feature. Uh, I'm not telling these are exhaustive uh, anyway, but these are the basic feature so that you have a certain references to study if you are interested. And uh, then, then uh, I mean, you can definitely, I mean, you will have, uh, you can go to the documentation that is important in molecular dynamics or uh, any other. You can go to the documentation and you can just follow the tutorials. Then you will be in the tutorial. What you are asking is that uh, uh, it's not may not be. I mean, the pictures will be given so you can follow those tutorial following the pictures. You can learn actually uh, that how you can run a simulation particular type of thing. But uh, if I have to show actually then then next class. Uh, it's the title is multi scale simulation of and modeling of biological system. So then I will not be probably able to uh, teach you that uh, advanced that is the hybrid and post gain method. 
that is also important to tackle certain type of uh, biological system. So I would suggest that uh, you go to uh, any tutorial actually. Each of these uh, you know, force field and the program packages have their own tutorial and nicely demonstrated and follow that. Hopefully you will be able to understand more. And I will try my best to uh, uh, to accommodate or to include as more example or as more demo uh, possible uh, for the this uh, multi scale method. And here uh, another question is that. <laughs> Kindly suggest that if protein has less impurities, is possible to post field identification. Uh, you have to the what will happen if the protein if the protein has something you know that is not uh, recognized by this force field, then you will not be able to run the uh, molecular dynamic simulation. Okay. I mean, there will be problems because uh, that will the impurities, whatever that is, may be, will uh, when, when the protein, uh, the biological system will evolve or uh, will generate a trajectory. So that impurities or whatever you are saying will be there, and that will create problem in the movement of the atoms based on the force field calculation. So then uh, your simulation uh, will uh, will be. In many cases, it might collapse. Or the thing is that what result you will get, get actually. I mean, it, uh, and in other cases, it will definitely fail. So, and if you are able to get also, I mean, maybe the impurities are very small or something. If you are able to get also, the results will be uh, not reliable. So you have to check the PDB file, as I have explained in the initial, I think one of the slides that you have to check. The PDB file, where are there are impurities? You know, there are many things written at the start of the PDB file that okay, that glycerol is there, or some inhibitor is there, or some you know other is trapped, or something like impurities or other uh, small molecule is trapped inside the protein crystal structure. So you have to get rid of all those things. Otherwise, you know, you will run into problem uh, with your MD simulation. Yes, any other question? Yeah, thank you. No more questions. Okay, then I think uh, uh, we will close uh, today's class and then we'll see you uh, i think on uh, 20th september okay sure thank you everyone